It's May 2023 and I have travelled to see Bowers and Wilkins at their factory and visitor centre which I'm standing in at the moment and I'm here to see, to listen to and to see being manufactured their brand new 800 signature speakers, the 801 signature and the 805 signature. And Bowers and Wilkins have been making signature versions of their speakers I think for about 30 years. Certain speakers certain ranges of speakers and certain speakers in that range get the signature additions. Not every single speaker, it's just specific ones. And in this particular 800 range, Diamond 4, it is the 801 and the 805 that get the signature additions. So today I've been here, we've had a listening session to the new Signature 805s and the new Signature 801s and fantastically we did a comparison between the normal 801D4 and the Signature version. And I've also spent time with Andy Kerr who explained the technical differences. And interestingly when he goes through the technical differences, which I'll talk through in this video and show you the differences, they don't sound like they would be that significant but actually when you listen to the two speakers, the 801 D4 and the 801 Signature, you can hear a difference. Not so much in the style of presentation or the way the speakers present music, but just in the refinement. There is more refinement to the sound from the new Signature speakers. On top of that, I'm gonna show you a bit around the factory, show you some of the bits and pieces of the manufacturing of these speakers. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. I have visited Bowers a number of times now and made other videos here before that you might have already seen. But the novelty of being here has not worn off for me yet. This time Bowers had on display a number of previous generation signature speakers, some I have never seen before, but you may recognize and maybe still listen to today. I do think it's interesting when you look at the older generation of Bauer speakers and compare them to the current 800D4 speakers, the similarities are obvious, but the differences and I suppose the developments are even more obvious. Speaking of differences, I will show you all of what is new with the signature speakers in detail shortly, but it's all about the sound, right? Well, not really with the signatures, it's very much about the looks as well. But for the sound, we had a short listening session with the 801 D4, and we listened to one track that I think was by Otis Redding. It doesn't really matter, it was an older track, maybe from about the 1960s, and it sounded old in its production with quite an edgy rawness to it, most noticeably in the upper mid-range and highs. And it just sounded like a part of the music. So while it wasn't necessarily all pleasing, I just accepted it as part of the track. Then the new 801D4 signature were installed and they played the same song again and that raw edginess was gone and instead there was a more relaxed, refined, calm vocal and highs. And the 801 signature sounded a little warmer to me with this song with a slightly tighter bass but the bulk of the presentation seemed pretty much the same. Now there might have been some more differences, but there was about eight of us listening and I did not have a great seat. So that was just my takeaway from this listening demo from where I was sitting. Then we got to listen to the new 805 D4 signature in a different demo room and I got a better seat this time. There was no AB demo due to a lack of time, which was a shame, but we did get to listen to a few different tracks. And the first thing I noticed was the step down in sound presentation from the 801 to the 805. Being honest, it was huge. And I think we would expect that, of course, but it was quite a shock to me. But it made me better appreciate what I had been hearing from the 801 D4 signature just before. But after a track or so, I did adjust, and all the main bits really of the 801 presentation was still there, just not with the same scale, energy, or immediacy. Now, of course, we were listening to just, just a Marantz integrated amplifier and not a huge power Michi pre and monoblock amplifier setup. And of course, that affects the sound and that, of course, matters. 
But even so, the 805 did a great job of creating a large sound in a smaller room with very good bass output for their size. I have listened to 805 D4 speakers in this room a couple of times now, and they always seem like the more warm and easygoing sounding of all of the 800 Diamond 4 speakers that I have listened to. And there is maybe something in that that's appealing to you. So this was my second tour of the Bowers factory. And the first thing that you can't help but be impressed by is the sheer size of the facility. It's huge, but every inch of space is being used. In the entrance area was some special things to look at. The Union Jack Nautilus are just super cool. And there were some Bowers speakers aside a Rotel system that I didn't recognize that had what looked like a marble tweeter on top enclosure. And I have never seen that before and I thought it was very cool in its own right too. The Bowers 800 series of speakers are famous for their curved cabinets. And seeing that cabinet being made in the flesh is really something. Seeing the soft thin layers of birch plywood, then glue, then birch plywood, then glue many times over being loaded into a press. It's hard to imagine the seemingly soft flexible layers can become this stiff rigid structure that this pressing process ends up forming. The press for the 801 cabinets is enormous and it's working at very hot temperatures too. Then when you see the end result, and then someone trying to bend or move the cabinet frame even slightly, using all their might, you appreciate the strength of this structure and why Bowers do it. But this is just the outer frame. The matrix bracing has to be installed. But before that, there is a lot of precise milling that happens to the edges and to the internals. Installing the matrix bracing is done using a torture chamber like frame system that will eventually put the cabinet under tension for the glue to set with the structures being positioned exactly right. But the glue application is a manual process and there is a lot of glue being applied in a lot of places. It makes you appreciate how different this is to gluing together a rectangular speaker cabinet and how much more intricate this process is. Assembled cabinets have to be prepared for finishing, and this is a process part done by robots, but it's in large part done by hand, or really by humans. And interestingly, I'm sure I recognize one of the chaps working here from my last visit to the factory, which was about two or so years ago. So it just shows the skill of this job requires skilled hands and eyes.
Painting, lacquering and curing is done by robot and through a mostly automated process. And you can imagine how long this takes when you consider just how many coats of finish are being applied to every 800 cabinets. And this is an even longer process for the signature speakers. Bowers say the midnight blue finish is 11 coats of paint and 11 coats of lacquer. And each speaker cabinet takes 18 labor hours for this. And that's not including the curing times. The special new wood finish for the new signature speakers is called California Bell Gloss, and it's a veneer from Italy, and it has 14 coats of lacquer applied with sanding in between, and Bowers say that it's a 24 hour process just for the finishing. And when I looked back over all of my footage from this visit, there was lots of people spending lots of time and care working on the finish of different 800 speakers. Seeing the factory change from heavy woodworking to an almost laboratory type of vibe for the manufacturing of the diamond tweeters takes you by surprise. The manufacturing of such a small and delicate thing is no joke, but the ladies who were working there were so confident and so fast in completing their processes, I had to ask them to slow down for me so I could try and find the correct focus with my camera for us to be able to see some of the processes and stages. And we are talking very precise applications of glue here. Very precise presses for the glue to form perfectly. Very steady hands for very precise soldering. And you can see by my camera work throughout this video, there is no way on earth that I could do this job. Of course, the tweeters need to be mounted into the solid aluminium tapering tubes, which also looks like an intricate fiddly process that again, the ladies completed with amazing confidence and speed with a big smile a lot of the time. Then each completed tweeter has to go into a mini anechoic chamber to be tested. The manufacturing of the continuum mid-range drivers, Bowers keeps that process top secret, so I was not able to get any of that on camera. But there was lots of fully manufactured drivers everywhere. One stage of the driver manufacturing process that I didn't see all of, but thought was super impressive, was the magnet assembly stage. Bowers magnetize their driver magnets themselves in-house, which sounds like a super interesting process, but not really for on camera, it's just someone putting the metal thing into a chamber. More interesting, I think, for you to see is the assembly production system, which is huge. And seeing the driver cages move around the assembly line machine, I thought was really very cool, even if not much was happening in terms of things being built. But like I said, there was lots of fully built drivers around for us to have a look at. Sadly, I missed a few things on this visit. Crossover assembly was one, but don't worry, I have some to show you shortly. And secondly was the painting of the turbine heads, and this is all done by skilled humans. The turbine head is a key part of the 800 series speakers design for their sound and their aesthetics, of course. And there were lots of turbine heads that had just been painted. So I got to see them in white and black and also in midnight blue for the new signature 801. I also got to see lots of men working on them to give them a perfect finish. And again, this is all done by hand or human really, which is really impressive, of course. I can't go past this stage without mentioning and showing you a Nautilus speaker that had also just been spray painted in some striking gold color. And that is not something that you see every day. Earlier in the tour, I got to see another pair of Nautilus that were finished in the new 30th anniversary Andromatic Abalone Pearl Paint, the most fancy name for paint I have ever come across. And I'm sure you will agree with me, the design may be 30 years old, but it's a pretty timeless design. And it's a stark reminder to me that I have never actually heard a pair of Nautilus speakers, which is a crime in my line of work, hint, hint, Bowers and Wilkins. 
coming back to the tour, I got to see a man installing some key vibration absorption material pieces into the internal structure of the turbine head. And this is very important, so remember this, and you will see why shortly. The final assembly area of the factory is always fascinating as you start to see finished speakers being made ready for their new owners. And everything that you have seen in the factory to this point means much more to you. Or really, everything that you see in front of you with the speakers, you appreciate much more because you know just how much work has gone into making them. You definitely don't take these speakers for granted. I personally find it very interesting seeing drivers and final bits being installed, the extreme care and attention all of the workers are taking, even when under the pressure of a big camera pointing in their faces. And at this latter stage of production, it's surprising just how much work still needs to be done. And even more finishing and polishing, and of course, final testing of each speaker in a chamber to make sure every pair is perfect that leaves the factory. All very, very, very impressive stuff. So what is new and improved with the 801 and 805 D4 signatures? Well firstly are the two new finishes, the Midnight Blue Metallic and the California Bell Gloss. And I don't know about you, but I think I prefer the wood finish. However, which one would you choose? Let me know down below in the comments section. But what about the technical differences? And there are several, and I'm going to start at the top and work down. This is the tweeter cover or grill for all the Diamond 4 tweeters. I'm sure a lot of you watching this video will be very familiar with this. Now here is the tweeter grill for the 801 and 805 D4 signature. And you should be able to see straight away that it's different. It's similar of course, but also really quite different. Now when I put both in the shot with the signature on the top and the normal 801 on the bottom, you can see that there is less metal and more space with the new grill cover design for the signature. But it's really quite hard to see clearly, so I'm going to freeze the shot here. And as you can imagine, this was hard for me to get on camera, but I think you can see for each of the larger holes, they are just a little bit more open with a bit more space with the signature cover or grill. Then multiply that small amount by a lot of the holes, the sum is greater than the part, or that is the idea. The second difference is with the aluminium top plate. On the screen now for you is the standard 801 top plate, which is a very big thing and hard for me to get on camera, but pay attention to the central area of the plate being all solid. Now here is the top plate for the Signature 801, and you can see the central area has some key sections removed for better structural rigidity. But this is not all. Here is the underside of the same top plate for the normal 801D4. And you can see it's a very intricate designed affair made up of many chambers. Then looking at the underside of the 801 signature top plate, you can see that same vibration absorption material used on the inside of the turbine head has been applied to some of the chambers in the underside of the top plate to reduce any resonances. Moving down, and this will be easier to show you initially with the crossover for the 805. And you can see the crossover for the 805D4, it has two blue bypass capacitors. With the signature 805 crossover, you can see the bypass capacitors are yellow and there is now four of them. So the upgrade is better and more bypass capacitors. And this is exactly the same with the 801 signature crossover, but there is a lot more of them being used in it overall. And when you look at the entirety of the crossover for the 801, it's a very significant part of the speaker's design. And it's a very large and heavy, expensive thing to put together with all of the top quality parts from Mundorf. And it's very impressive, of course. Moving down, Bowers say they have improved the motor structure of the base and mid-base driver in the 801 and 805 signature. 
and I have no way of showing you anything for this other than holding one of the A-Tone 1's beige drivers in my hands and showing you it and confirming that it's very, very heavy. The final difference is with the port. Here is the port for the standard Ato 1D4 and you can see it's an all plastic, very substantial thing. With the signature port, Bowers have crafted the external end of the port from aluminium and it's bonded to the plastic end of the port that lives deep inside the speaker. And Bowers say with the extra structural rigidity of the aluminium section of the port, combined with the improved motor system in the drivers, it produces better bass quality. So there you have all of the technical changes and improvements for the 801 and 805 signature. And of course, the 805 doesn't get all of them as they are not appropriate for its design. So most of the technical changes are seemingly only relevant to the 801. So how much are the signature speakers going to cost you? £45,000 for the 801D4 signature or $50,000 in euros. The 805 signature are £10,000 or 12,000 euros and dollars. So both of these speakers are some serious cheddar and are only really going to be for a select few lucky audio files and I think that is part of the point. Bowers say that these are the best of their best speakers and such they are the best speakers that Bowers are capable of producing today. But I think there's also an exclusivity aspect to them as well. Let me know down below in the comment section if you will be buying some. And I hope you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up if you did, and subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you'd like to see lots and lots more videos like this.